Hi everyone, I'm Yash, the guy behind the CCT. 12.1 is here and I want to show you all the features it brings. I intended at first that 3 is to be as lean as possible, but of course it ended up bloated with new stuff. Uh, but first, I want to thank everyone for the Stabilvisory event. It was a huge success and uh, while there has been delays in getting prizes sent to winners, um, things are getting slowly sorted out and uh, eventually everyone will get what, uh, what they want. Um, so sorry about the delay. Uh, I know it feels long, but it's a lot of manual work and uh, I didn't expect it to be as complex as it was, to be honest. So yeah, sorry about that. But still, it's a huge success with lots of feedback, lots of positive uh, comments made on OCCT and that really, really motivated me to go further and end up with 12.1. So let's go over all the features this new release brings. All right, let's start with uh, 3D Adaptive. Um, when I released this test, I think it was six or eight months ago, um, I actually said it was locked behind the license or through a Patreon subscription. And I promised that this test would be free after a while. And I feel like this time, uh, the time is ripe and uh, this test will now be available in the free edition of OCCT. And this is kind of a breakthrough in 3D testing. Feedback has been very, very positive um, from uh, end users doing overclocking and also from all the professional users of OCCT, especially pre-built vendors, um, which have been using this test a lot uh, because of its unique capabilities. Um, basically, this test can change its load dynamically while running and while checking for errors. So here, it will start at 15% intensity and go up to 100. Then it will increase by 5% every 5 seconds. So it will start very low at 15% and then it will go 20, 25, 30, 35 and so on. And you will see on my figures here that um, the power will slowly climb up and uh, my GPU clocks will actually react as well. And at around 55%, the clocks will cap and then it will start throttling down. So instead of going all out with Furmark or going through the hassle of installing uh, 3D Mark and squint your eyes and wait for a crash or for an artifact to appear, you can just click on the button here, configure, click, and second click, and you will test your whole GPU curve in a single click. And it will reach game-like uh, game -like load, which is peak frequency. It will reach extreme load and uh, actually throttle down. And you will see it happening here. Actually, it starts. Uh, my GPU reach uh, 2.8 and it's starting to throttle down uh, while you see the power here, which is climbing all while doing error detection. So if there is something off, you will know, definitely know. So this is sort of a breakthrough. Um, this is very, very, very uh, efficient at finding errors and it's a very helpful tool for you to overclock your GPU or just to check for their, uh, for their stability. I'm actually going to stop it so I don't get all my GPU noise on, on the video. Um, so yeah, this is very interesting for you and it's really a breakthrough. So I'm happy to uh, announce that it's available in the free edition of OCCT. Um, also, it has a very interesting feature, which is the switch option. Basically, this will make the test switch between two different states, a low and a high state. So usually you go like 20-100% or something like that. And it will switch between the two rapidly. 2100, 2100, 2100, and you can go as low as 200 milliseconds. So it will generate lots of transient loads. Your GPU will be spiking and actually monitoring in OCCT cannot keep up because it's switching so fast. So this is very useful in uncovering errors which might happen uh, usually during loading screens in games. The next major feature of 12.1 is a new benchmark for measuring your CPU cache and memory latency and bandwidth. And it's giving you all those figures in the free edition. I'm not going to hide measures behind the license. This is fully free. And uh, it's a new tool to give you those figures without going through the hassle of paying for them. Because I feel like 
those figures should be available for free and it's not fair to hide those numbers behind a license or something which you pay for. Um, so the accuracy of those measures will improve over time, but they are very accurate as it stands now, especially for memory figures. Uh, and it's just giving you insight and uh, they are very reproducible and they are completely compatible with the newer CPUs um, with 3D caches and you won't have any, any issues with those. It has been thoroughly tested by all the awesome guys from my Discord server. And thanks everyone again, because you did do great work testing everything. Um, I cannot display it on screen because um, I advise you to run as many tasks as possible while running this benchmark. I even go as far as disabling uh, monitoring updates while this benchmark is running just to ensure they don't interfere with the measures. And I even had to replace the spinning indicator in the CCT because it was a 60 FPS animation despite how simple it looked. And I went for something which ran at 2 FPS uh, just to ensure that uh, there is less interference uh, with the measures. So uh, have fun with that. It's a new tool. It's fully free and uh, put it to good use for your memory overclocking uh, endeavors. I told you 12.1 was packed with features. Well, I didn't lie because there is even more. Um, I've been partnering with Comino for the next feature. Um, they are a company which breeds really quality, uh, high-end uh, workstation and servers, which are all liquid-cooled um, with uh, top-notch components and very pricey components. And they've been very helpful in letting me access uh, crazy setups so that I could develop the new test. Um, they include those crazy GPUs uh, like NVIDIA A100, H100, and others which are dedicated to compute scenarios. Um, those GPUs are very pricey. It's 20 to 40 grand each. And they are interesting in that they are graphic cards which don't have any 3D rendering capabilities. So they're just not seen by DirectX. So they cannot be tested through normal means. They won't run your uh, 3D standard or 3D adaptive test. So um, you couldn't test them uh, prior to GPU compute. This new test I'm introducing. Um, it's based on OpenCL and it's, you, it's uh, actually pretty configurable. And uh, you can see here, I'm on a setup with two NVIDIA A100. Um, and you have an option to select the GPU you want to test. Do I want to test one? Uh, or uh, do I want to test them all? Just a shorthand for ease of use. And then you input the amount of memory, the test, the amount of VRAM actually, the test we use on each card. It starts and let hell run loose. I mean, this thing is going to load the GPUs very heavily. Um, it's also checking for errors. So instead of um, installing your brand new 40 grand GPU and praying that your one week training scenario will uh, hopefully uh, succeed, well, you can check beforehand that everything is fine with your setup, uh, which is frankly priceless when you are uh, doing those heavy workloads which can last a week. I mean, how sorry would you be if things fail after so long? So uh, this test actually lets you configure the amount of VRAM which is tested and there is sort of a sweet spot. If you put uh, an amount of memory which is too low, well, the test will be light just because it's going to put the emphasis on transferring data. If you uh, put a memory which is too high, to a, a high amount of memory, uh, it will rely on transferring data between the core and the VRAM, which will sort of lower the load. And there is a sweet spot where things go completely crazy. So it's a breakthrough for everyone which is doing AI training, which is uh, in investing heavily in those scenarios in that now, you can have a trustworthy test which will report any errors which will occur on those cards. And as far as I know, uh, you didn't have any options uh, to do so before. A 12.1. The next major feature of OCCT is in the CPU test, I revamped the advanced thread section. Um, it's easier to use and more powerful as before. 
Basically, you will now have shorthand so that you can tell OCCT to cycle all through all cores, which will test each core in quick succession, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, cycle through P cores or E cores if your, uh, if your CPU supports uh, those kind of architecture, at which interval the test will cycle, we switch forward the test, and how many threads per core you want to run, and uh, you can go crazy here, like 32 threads per core, which is pretty crazy and will hammer your core as a, harder than ever. And I expect these simple settings will uh, have a great impact on how you test your overclocking, your per core overclocking now. But I didn't stop there. I wanted you to have full control on how the test will behave. So you have now a custom option here, which will let you configure exactly how the test will uh, behave. So you can now um, set uh, here, I want to start with P0 and P4, and the, this green check mark means a thread group will be created and assigned to each core, each check mark being 32 threads here, as I configure here, so there will be uh, 64 threads launched here, they will start at P0 and P4 and go forward and follow here by cycling. And let's say I don't want to test P1, I just exclude it. So you can just configure your own uh, cycle schedule here and uh, go crazy stuff. And uh, here, something like that. And this will test P0, then switch to P1, P2, P3 and go back to P0. So this is very powerful and uh, took me a while to end up with a somewhat usable UI, which is also due for a date. As soon as I got uh, someone which, is, uh, which can help me design something better, but it's very usable, still useful, it's still easy to use as it stands now, and it allows you to, uh, it should fit all your uh, pair core testing scenarios. So this is also a big update of 12.1, and uh, it might not seem much, but I expect um, these simple settings, thread per core, to have a great impact because testing showed that 32 core in a small data set scenario here had very particular, very peculiar capabilities and uncovering instabilities quickly. So um, play with it and find stuff that works and tell me, uh, how, uh, and tell me the outcome. Um, again, this is very interesting for me. Finally, at the request uh, of a few customers, uh, Enterprise Edition customers actually, I've added uh, disk information uh, inside the system information report. So you will have that information both in OCCT's GUI and in uh, the Enterprise Edition report. Um, you will have access to uh, general information about your disk, about smart information, and also uh, everything which um, which HW Info uh, is reporting uh, is reporting to me. Um, this can be very interesting, uh, especially in the report comparison feature in the Enterprise Edition. All right, that's it for twelve point one. Um, I wanted first that release to be as lean as possible, but it got bloated anyway, just because I guess I cannot stop myself and uh, I love tinkering with stuff and um, do this. Everything I do here is really a lot of fun. So anyway, guys, thanks for uh, dealing with my French accent uh, throughout this video. Uh, kudos if you did watch everything and listen to all my ranting. Um, I will see you soon for even more uh, feature and uh, exciting news about OCCT.